Okay, this is section 6.4 of the College Trig. We're looking at radians, arc length, and angular speed. First topic here is the unit circle. In the last section, we looked at rotations on a circle with center at the origin and radius r, where r was any positive number. We now look at a special circle called the unit circle. Remember, unit really means one. So definition, the unit circle is the circle of radius one that's centered at the origin. The equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. Technically one squared. Remember for any circle centered at the origin, with radius r, it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared, r and r happen to be one. So remember this equation for the unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals one. Okay, the point one zero is almost always called the point A when discussing the unit circle. We always start rotations on the unit circle from the point A with coordinates 1, 0. Remember, that's on the positive x-axis. Below is the graph of the unit circle, and there's the point A, coordinates 1, 0. Distances on the unit circle. Recall that the circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. In other geometric figures, circumference is called perimeter, but for circles, it's called circumference. The formula for the circumference of a circle of radius r is c for circumference equals 2 pi r. You may recall that from your days of high school geometry. For the unit circle, r is 1, so the circumference of the unit circle is just 2 pi. So if you go once around the unit circle, starting at 1, 0 and ending at 1, 0, you travel a length of 2 pi units. You need to be aware of the following. A quadrant is one-fourth of the unit circle. So passing through a quadrant goes to a distance of one-fourth times two pi, which is pi over two. Since unit circle is a curved graph, we call any distance on the unit circle, or any circle for that matter, an arc length. So the arc length of one-fourth of the unit circle is pi over two units, whatever units you happen to be using to measure, you know, feet, inches, yards, miles. Because of number one, that a quadrant is pi over 2, you have the following special arc lengths on the unit circle. Be aware that there are other special arc lengths. These are just a few of them. The picture's on the next slide. Okay, so remember, a quadrant is pi over 2. So we start at 0 because you haven't moved from this point. You've now gone pi over 2. Technically, this would be 2 pi over 2, so the 2 counts and you have pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And lastly, 4 pi over 2, which 4 pi over 2 is just 2 pi. So every time you go through a quadrant, you've gone through pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, or pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. And if you kept going, you'd have 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, and so on. Some examples. How far will a point travel if it moves the following distances from point A, which is coordinate 1, 0, on the circle? Simplify your answers. Do not use mixed and renewables in your answers. Now, notice since a quadrant is pi over 2, most of the really good arc lengths on the unit circle do involve pi. So two thirds of the way around the unit circle. So two thirds. So we need to do two thirds times two pi. Remember, once around the circle is two pi. I'm only going two thirds. So I'm going to have two thirds times two pi, technically over one. You get four pi over three. So two thirds around the circle is four pi over three units. Negative three fourths of the way around the unit circle. So I'm going to have negative 3 fourths times 2 pi. They find you can cancel the 4 into the 2, so you have uh, negative 3 pi over 2. Now notice since it's a negative arc length, that means we went clockwise from the point 1, 0. It's just like with our regular rotations, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Number 3, 5 times around the unit circle. This is kind of like you're tired just rolling along. So we need 5 times 2 pi. So we get 10 pi. So if you've gone 5 times around the unit circle, you've gone a distance of 10 pi units. Points on the unit circle. Remember, we already have 1, the point 1, 0. So let t be an arc length on the unit circle. Remember, if it's positive, you've gone counterclockwise. If it's negative, you've gone clockwise. Let p of t equal xy be the point on the unit circle where the arc length of length t ends. Remember, t starts at the point 1, 0. So p of t is where t ends. 
So we have the picture on the next slide. So we started here at 1, 0. We've gone this length of t, and we stopped here. So the point as a function of t, that's why it's called p of t, the point as a function of t, has coordinates x, y. We would like to know what x and y are. Notice it's kind of a tough problem. Now we do have some special ones. Remember the quadrants are pi over 2. So we have a tough problem ahead of us. So find p of t for each of the following. Simplify your answer. Do not use next to the in your answer. And again, expect pi to be lying around. Now it doesn't have to, but kind of expect it. So t is pi. I've got a length of pi. So recall that a quadrant is pi over 2. So pi is 2 times pi over 2. So we've gone through two quadrants. So pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. And notice we can t figure out what that point is. It's negative 1, 0, because we ended up on the x-axis. Remember, the circle has radius 1. So p of pi over 2 is negative 1, 0. So p of pi, negative 1, 0. So again, we had to have something special. Otherwise, you know, who knows what it is. Number two, t is negative 3 pi over 2. So I'm going clockwise from the point 1, 0. So we must go through three quadrants. Because remember, without the negative 3, pi over 2 is a quadrant. So we're going three quadrants clockwise. So negative pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And it looks like I'm at 1, excuse me, 0, 1. So p of negative 3 pi over 2 is just the point zero one. Again, we ended up on an axis, so we were able to read it. In general, trying to find p of t is a very tough problem. So we will solve the problem of finding p of t in section 6.5, which is the next section. Radian measure. So radian measure. This is our second topic of this section. We now look at another way of measuring angles. Remember, we already have degrees, and then you have, you know, technically degrees, minutes, seconds. So it is based on circles. Definition. An angle is said to have a measure of one radian, if and only if it is the angle subtended by an arc of length one on the unit circle. You're probably saying, what does that mean? Here's our picture. So we start at 1, 0. Remember, the radius is 1. If I go a length of 1 on that curvy part, that arc length is 1, that length is 1 radian. And the angle, AOP, has a measure of 1 radian. Technically, a radian is a real number. We just tack on the word radian so you won't confuse it with a degree. Notice uh, 1 radian is not quite 90 degrees, but it seems to have gone more than halfway, so it's bigger than 45 degrees. In general, for any circle of radius r, we have the following. Let theta be an angle with vertex at the origin. If theta subtends an arc of length s in a circle of radius r with center at the origin, then the radian measure of theta is given by theta equals s over r. So notice it's arc length divided by radius. Remember, arc length and radius are measured in the same units, so notice the units wouldn't cancel. That's why we say that theta is actually a real number. Some notes on this. Radian measure is a real number. There are no units attached to it, even though we'll sometimes say radians. And in the calculator, when you click on mode, uh, the one that's next to degrees that says rad, R-A-D, that's radian. If you do not put the degree symbol with an angle's measurement, it is by default radians. If you mean degrees, then you must put the degree symbol. And without the degree symbol, you have radians, even if you're not thinking radians. Number three, theta equals s over r is equivalent to s equals r theta. Myself, I use remember as s equals r theta. s is an arc length. r is a radius. Theta is the angle measured in radians. So s equals r theta. <clears throat> Excuse me. One radian is about 57.29578 degrees, or 57 degrees, 17 minutes, 44.8 seconds. I don't know if you think of that as huge or what, but um, 
it's kind of what we said it would be. We put that in the less than 90 degrees, or bigger than 45. On the unit circle, the radian is the same as the arc length, since r is equal to 1 on the unit circle. Remember, we have s equal r theta. If r is 1, you have s equal theta. That's the advantage of the unit circle. Some examples. Draw an angle that has the given measure on the unit circle. Okay. Theta is pi over 2. Okay, this is one quadrant. So, remember, start at point 0.10. There's our arc length of uh, pi over 2. So, that is pi over 2. Uh, if you're really clever, you may notice that's the right angle. So 90 degrees is pi over 2. Theta is pi over 4. So this is half of a quadrant, since 1 half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. So I want half of a quadrant. So, yeah. Number 3, theta is 5. Okay, here's a challenge. There's no pi sitting there to help us out. So we need to find the quadrant for theta equals pi. Okay, pi is about 3.14. 3 pi over 2 is about 4.71. All I did was take out my chalk. We're going to do 3 times pi divided by 2. So notice uh, 4.71 to 3 pi over 2 is still less than 5. 5 is greater than 3 pi over 2, so 5 is not in quadrant 3. It's not. 2 pi is about 6.28. Aha, notice, 5, what we're looking for, is between 4.71 and 6.28. That puts it in quadrant 4. Okay, quadrant 4. So, it's about here. This arc length is about 5 radian, or just 5. Converting between radians and degrees. And most students feel more comfortable with degrees and radians, so they'll always convert their radians to degrees, even if it's not part of the problem. So most students find trying to measure an angle in radians somewhat difficult. If you think about your protractors, your simple protractors from high school geometry, they were marked off in degrees. Um, they actually do make uh, protractors that are marked off in radians. So most students will just convert the radian measure to degree measure and then draw the angle. We're more familiar with degrees. Okay, so we need a way to convert between the two different ways of measuring angles. Keep in mind that if you don't see the degree symbol, or minutes and or second symbols, then the angle is being measured in radians. Radians are real numbers. So in the absence of degrees, minutes, seconds, you have radians, even if you don't think you do, even if you didn't intend to. So recall that there are 306 degrees in a full circle. Remember, that was the definition, that one degree is one 360th of a circle. On the unit circle, the radian measure of a circle is arc length. So the arc length of a full circle is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. Remember, circumference is 2 pi r. Remember, on the unit circle, r is 1. So the circumference on the unit circle is just 2 pi. Remember, in any circle, whether it's a unit circle or not, 3 and 6 degrees is equal to a first full circle. So I have 3 and 6 degrees for a full circle and 2 pi for a full circle. So that means that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. Now notice 2 pi, I can divide out, divide by 2 and 360, I can also divide by 2. So dividing by 2, I get pi radians is 180 degrees. So remember, pi radians is 180 degrees. If you think about the unit circle, pi radians is, you're on the negative x-axis, 180 degrees, you're on the negative x-axis. So this gives us our fudge factors for converting between degrees and radians using pi gradients is equal to 180 degrees. So, number one, to convert radian measure to degree measure, multiply the radian measure by 180 degrees over pi. Remember, most of the good radian measures involve pi, so the pi's will cancel, but remember, they don't have to. Like that example that had five. Number two, to convert measure degree measure to radian measure, multiply the degree measure by pi or 180 degrees. This assumes that you've converted your degree measure to decimal degrees, that you haven't left it in degrees, minutes, seconds, but you've gone to decimal degrees. So, remember to convert degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. You do the degree plus the minutes divided by 60 
plus the seconds divided by 3600. Some examples. Convert each degree measure to radian measure. Simplify your answers. Do not approximate. Remember, if you're going to approximate, you need to be told how many decimal places to care. Here's our first one, 30 degrees. So I'm going to take 30 degrees times pi over 180. Another second divide by 10. One, two. Well, 30 does go evenly into 60, uh, into 180, what, six times? So I have 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. Okay. 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. Number 30 degrees is a special angle. So pi over 6 is a special radian. Number 2, negative 240 degrees. So I'm going to have negative 240 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. Okay, we can do some canceling here. 6 goes into negative 240, negative 4 times. 6 goes into 180, 3 times. So I'll end up with negative 4 pi over 3. Now, if you didn't cancel 60 all at once, you could you know, mark out the zeros divided by 10, and then notice that 6 goes into 24 and 18. Number 3, 55 degrees. So I'm going to take 55 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. I know 5 will go into 55 and 5 will go into 180. So that goes 11 times into 55. It goes 36 times into uh, 180. So I have 11 pi over 36. So 55 degrees is 11 pi over 36. Some examples. Convert each radian measure to an equivalent degree measure. So we're going from radians to degrees. So I got pi over 9. Remember, there's no degree symbol, so this is radians even if you weren't thinking radians. So I've got pi over 9 times 180 degrees over pi. Notice the pi is canceled. And 9 goes into 180 20 times. So I've got 20 degrees. Pi over 9 is 20 degrees. Number 2, negative 3 pi over 5. So I'm going to take negative 3 pi over 5 times 180 degrees over pi. The pi is canceled. And 5 will go into 180, what, 36 times? So I'm going to end up with negative 3 times 36. So I'm going to get negative 108 degrees. Okay. Kind of a cold angle, huh? Number 3, 2. Okay. Remember, since you don't see a degree symbol, you know it's radians. So I'm going to take 2 times 180 degrees over pi. Sorry about the motorcycle. I'm going to have 306 degrees over pi. Leave it like that. Remember, we were told... Don't approximate. This is the exact value. If you wanted to approximate it, you need to take out your calculator and do 360 divided by pi and see what it worked out to be. Our fourth topic, arc length and central angles. Definition. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. Now, the circle doesn't have to be centered at the origin, but it's great if it is. So we have been drawing central angles using a circle as the center. So we didn't say we were drawing central angles, but we were. So we've been using the following. If theta is a central angle that subtends an arc of length s and a circle of radius r, then the radian measure of theta is s over r. Again, I prefer to think of it as s equals r theta. Arc length is equal to radius times angle measured in radians. Remember, s equals r theta only works if theta is in radians. To find coterminal angles whose measures are given radians, we add and subtract multiples of 2 pi. Remember, if we were in a uh, degree measure, we would add and subtract multiples of 360 degrees. So we also have a similar notion for reference angles, for angles measured in radians, but since the radians are real numbers, instead of saying reference angle, we say reference number. Just as reference angles are between 0 degrees and 9 degrees, reference numbers are between 0 and pi over 2 radians. Remember, zero radians is the same thing as zero degrees. And 90 degrees is a quadrant. Pi over 2 is a quadrant. Some examples. For each of the following, find part A, two positive coterminal angles. Part B, two negative coterminal angles. Here's our first one. T is 2 pi over 9. And 2 pi over 9. So we're going to add 2 pi, which I, so if I have a denominator of 9, it might be more convenient to think of 2 pi as 18 pi over 9. So 2 pi over 9 plus 2 pi, 
I get 2 pi plus 18 pi over 9. What is that? 20 pi over 9. And to get another one, do 20 pi over 9 plus 2 pi. So I've got 20 pi plus 18 pi over 9. I get what? 38 pi over 9. For part B, we'll be subtracting 2 pi. So remember, 2 pi is 18 pi over 9. So I've got 2 pi over 9 minus 2 pi. So 2 pi over 9 minus 18 pi over 9. So you get negative 16 pi over 9. Uh, do it again. So I'll have negative 16 pi over 9 minus 2 pi, which is negative 16 pi minus 18 pi over 9. So I get uh, what? negative 34 pi over 9. So there are my two negative cotrimal angles. Now again, because most arc lengths are pi over something or something times pi over something, you need to get to be really, really good with fractions. Much better than you were back in grammar school. Number two, t is negative 7 pi over 5, because it's already negative. So we're going to add 2 pi. Remember, since I have a denominator of 5, 2 pi would be 10 pi over 5. Just going you know, to multiply that by 2. So, yeah. so negative 7 pi over 5 plus 2 pi. So negative 7 pi over 5 plus 10 pi. So I get what? 3 pi over 5. And then do it again. So 3 pi over 5 plus 2 pi. So 3 pi plus 10 pi over 5. You get negative, negative, get 13 pi over 5. So there are my two positive coterminals. Okay, now we're going to subtract 2 pi. So we're going to have negative 7 pi over 5 minus 2 pi. So negative 7 pi minus 10 pi all over 5. Negative 17 pi over 5. So now we're going to have negative 17 pi over 5 minus 2 pi. So that's going to be negative 17 pi minus 10 pi all over 5. So negative 27 pi over 5. So there are my two negative coterminal angles. Technically, we should be saying arc lengths. Radians are usually thought of as being arc lengths. Angles, are, the thetas, are usually thought of as being the angles measured in degrees. Last thing, number three here. So, we're going to add 2 pi. 3 plus 2 pi. That's it. You can't do anything else to it. Then do it again. 3 pi plus 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi. So 3 plus 4 pi. Those are your two positive coterminals. Okay, that's what they are. Okay, subtract 2 pi. 3 minus 2 pi. Okay, remember, pi is about 3.14, so negative 2 times that. 3 minus something bigger than 6, this is negative. And then 3 minus 2 pi minus 2 pi, 3 minus 4 pi. So there are my two negatives. Okay, let's find the reference number for each of the following. T is 3. Okay. So find T equals 3 on the unit circle. Remember, Pi over 2 is one quadrant. Pi is the second quadrant. Remember, pi is about 3.14. I just went past 3. So this is an arc length of 3. This little sliver right there, that is the reference number. Remember, to get reference angle, you go to the x-axis. Same thing for the reference number, go to the x-axis. So remember, this is pi. If I go all the way to the negative x-axis, that's pi. So this little sliver is pi minus 3. That's my reference number. Notice it's awful if you don't have those special ones with pi in them radiant measure. T is 3 pi over 4. Okay, we're going to locate 3 pi over 4 in the unit circle. Remember, pi over 2, which is 2 pi over 4, is a quadrant. So this went past pi over 2. But notice 3 fourths of pi is less than pi. So I'm here in quadrant 2. So this is an arc of length 3 pi over 4. Remember, this is pi over 2 which is 2 pi over 4. This is pi down here, which is 4 pi over 4, so I'm somewhere in here. Now, this gap is my reference number. So it's pi minus 3 pi over 4, which is what? Pi over 4. So 4 pi minus 3 pi over 4, so I get pi over 4. There's my reference number. Again, remember, you need to remember, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. 4 pi, 2 pi. Remember, a quadrant is pi over 2. 1 pi over 2. 2 pi over 2, which is pi. 3 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And you can keep going. 5 pi over 2, and so on. T is 11 pi over 9. Okay? We're going to try to locate 11 pi over 9 on the unit circle. Okay? It's about here. Now remember, this is pi. 11 ninths of pi is bigger than that. This is 3 pi over 2. In terms of getting a common denominator for 9 and 2, it's 18. 
this is 22 pi over 18, and 3 pi over 2 would be 33 pi over, yeah, 33 pi over 2. So I'm in quadrant 3. Remember, to get the reference number, go to the x-axis. So this gap right here is the reference number. Remember, this is 11 pi over 9. Up here is pi. So my reference number is 11 pi over 9 minus pi. Okay, my common denominator is 9. It's 11 pi minus 18 pi all over 9. Let's see, 9 pi over 9. What am I thinking? I was thinking 2 pi. So 11 pi over 9 minus 9 pi over 9. I get 2 pi over 9. That's your reference number. Again, get used to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi, and so on like that. Linear speed and angular speed. Angular speed, as the name implies, involves an angle. We're going to now look at objects moving around on circles. This is the same thing as tires, wheels, circles, etc., rotating on an axis through their centers. You know, kind of like gears. The teeth on the gears just keep it from slipping. So, linear speed. Linear speed. Linear speed is the usual miles per hour, feet per second, kilometers per hour, whatever. And that's basically a linear unit measure per unit of time. So unit of measure divided by unit of time. Most of the time we have per hour, per minute, per second. So the linear speed of an object is given by the rate, by the time rate of change of the distance covered by the object. We denote linear speed by v. So linear speed is given by v is equal to s over t, where s is the distance traveled by the object. Okay, we don't use d for distance because d is good for the amber of a circle for, for forever. So the next most prominent sound in distance is s, and t is time needed to travel the distance. And you may be thinking, well, v for velocity, mm, kind of. Yeah. Some examples. An object travels 260 miles in two hours. Find the linear speed in miles per hour. Simplify your answers. So v is going to be distance divided by time. So 260 over 2, which is what, 130? So 130 miles per hour. Kind of fast. Our second one. An object makes 4.6 revolutions of a circle of radius 7 feet in 15 seconds. Find the linear speed of the object in feet per second. Round your final answer to two decimal to two places to the right of the decimal point. A 4.6 revolutions of a circle of radius 7 feet. So t is 15, right? 15 seconds. We've got to find s. One revolution is equal to the circumference of the circle. So one revolution is 2 pi r. r is oh, 7. Now, when you're looking at the radius be sure it says radius and not diameter. If it said diameter, remember radius is half a diameter. So I've got 2 pi times 7, so 14 pi. So one revolution is 14 pi feet. And we made 4.6 revolutions. So S is going to be 4.6 times 14 pi. That's 64.4 pi. So there's my S, there's my T, so velocity. It's going to be 64.4 pi divided by 15. And you take out the calculator and crunch it out. You get to the nearest of the two places, 13.49 feet per second. Again, if you want to eyewitness mathematics, I'm looking at 64.4. There's my pi in blue, second pi. You don't need to say times. Your calculator understood this multiplication. Divided by 15, 13, to the two places, 13.49. Oh, you got it right. You are so clever. Okay, number three. An object makes an angle of 56 radians in a circle of radius 6 feet in 23 seconds. Find the linear speed of the object. Round the final answer to the two places or the decimal point. So 56 radians in a circle of radius 6 feet. So I got my time, 23 seconds. Now, if you remember, s equals r theta. There's my r, and there's my theta in radians. 
So this is going to be 6 times 56, 336 feet, okay, 336 feet. So my linear speed is 336 divided by 23, which to two places, 14.61 feet per second. In case you're wondering, are these fast? Okay, most of us are familiar with like 60 miles per hour, you know, kind of a normal speed. Uh, 60 miles per hour is 88 feet per second. So you can see, these are really kind of slow. Probably have to pass them on the highway. Okay, number four. An object makes an angle of 15,000 degrees in a circle of radius 8 feet in 30 seconds. Find the linear speed of the object in feet per second. Round the final answer to two places to the decimal point. Okay, notice I got my time, 30. S would be um, S equals R theta. I got my R, but this is not radians. So we got to find S. So we need to convert 15,000 degrees to uh, radians. So 15,000 times pi over 180. 15,000 pi over 10. You can leave it like that, because we're going to give it to the calculator. So S is going to be equal to r theta, so there's my theta, now oh, there's my r, 8. So I have 8 times 15,000 pi over 18. So I get, I lost a zero there, didn't I? Yes, I did. Let me go back and fix all of this. Okay, I think I'm back to where I left off. Okay, we were converting our radio measure for 15,000 degrees, so 15,000 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. Okay, I did at least cancel out the tens, you know, mark out a zero. But I'm leaving it like that because, you know, the calculator is going to do all the work. So 8 times 1,500 pi over 18. You get 12,000 pi over 18 for your S. So velocity is S over T. So there's my S. There's my T. So I'm going to do 12,000 pi over 18 divided by 30. Now, clearly, I gave this to the calculator. So we're going to have 12,000 pi over 18 times 30. Remember, divided by 30 is 1 30th. Or if you wanted to do it you know, another way, like on your calculator, if you wanted to do, you know, in parentheses, 12, 1, 2, 3, second pi divided by 18. So notice that means I've done this calculation, divided by 30. Okay, and we're going to two places, so 69.81 feet per second. But doing it this way, you get the same thing. Notice this is still below 60 miles an hour. Remember, 60 miles an hour is 88 feet per second. Angular speed. So we'll make an angle. So the idea of angular speed is to find number of rotations or revolutions per unit of time or RPMs. Most of us are more familiar with RPMs. And this we need to remember that one rotation is two pi radian. So the angular speed of an object is the time rate of change of the revolutions or rotations that the object makes while traveling on a circular path. Angular speed is usually noted by lowercase Greek omega. The form for omega is omega is equal to theta over t, where theta is in radians and t is time. Connection between v and omega, the linear speed and the angular speed. v is equal to s over t, and omega is equal to theta over t. Remember, s is an arc length, theta is a radian measure. In radian measure, S is equal to R theta. So V would be equal to R theta over T. Again, theta in radians. So clearing the angular speed of fractions gives omega T is theta. Right? Cross multiplying that's omega over 1. So V is going to be R times omega T over T. I've replaced theta by what it is. It's omega T. The t's cancel, so v is equal to r omega. So the linear speed is the radius times the angular speed. Now notice the angular speed has to be given in radians per unit of time, and it has to be the same unit of time that you use for the linear speed. Notice radians is a big deal. For example, 
A car is traveling 60 miles per hour. If the tires of the car have a radius of 16 inches, find the angular speed of the tire in revolutions per minute. Round to final answer, two places divided by the decimal point. Mm -hmm. So 60 miles per hour, radius is 16. And at the angular speed and revolutions per minute. So we have V is equal to 60 miles per hour. To get all of our units to match, we need V in inches per minute, right? Because we want revolutions per minute. So 60 miles per hour is going to be okay, one hour divided by 60 minutes. So our, our hours will cancel. So notice if I stop right there, I'd have miles per minute. Now I got to get rid of the uh, miles. So there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So now the miles will cancel, the hours will cancel, and I would have feet. And then to convert the feet to inches, I need to have 12 inches one foot. So let's see, my feet cancel. My miles cancel. My hours cancel. I now have inches per minute. So, you know, okay, the 60s, of course, will cancel. I'm going to just do 5,080 times 12, so all that multiplication nonsense. You get 63,360 inches per minute. That's what 60 miles per hour is. Sounds really fast when you do it now, right? So G equals R omega becomes this. 6,360, remember that's my V, is equal to 16 times omega. Remember, omega, omega, R was 16 inches. You divide by 16. So 3,060 is equal to omega. And now remember, this is radians per minute. I wanted revolutions. So... How many radians in one revolution? Remember, 2 pi. 2 pi radians is one revolution. So to get revolutions per minute, we're going to use one revolution as 2 pi radians. So we divide by 2 pi, and we're going to walk around to about two places. So 3,960 divided by 2 pi. And now, when you give this to your calculator, you need to remember to put the denominator in parentheses, otherwise, you know, my that sound takes over and just awful things. So I got 396. O divided by, in parentheses, 2 pi. Okay. Now, if you didn't do the parentheses, if you just did 3, 9, 6, O divided by 2 and then did pi, you get something different. The calculator first did the 3,060 divided by 2 and then multiply that result by pi. Okay. Uh, remember, if your numerator or denominator contains any sort of an operation, they must be enclosed in their own little special parentheses. So about 630.25 revolutions per minute. Okay, find the linear speed at the tip of the second hand of a clock in inches per second if the second hand has a length of 8 inches. Round the final answer to two places where I was a point. We're trying to figure out how fast is that second hand going? Okay, it looks like we have a radius of 8 inches. So we have r is equal to 8. Omega is 2 pi radians per 60 seconds. Remember, we want to find the linear speed of the clock in inches per second. So I know when it goes all the way around, it makes one complete revolution, 2 pi radians, it takes 60 seconds because that's a second hand. So I'm going to have 2 pi over 60, which is pi over 30. Okay. So the tip, the second hand is making pi over 30, pi over 30 radians per second. So we're going to use v is equal to r theta. So r, theta. r omega, r omega. My r is 8. So v is going to be 8 times pi over 30. And we're going to two places. So 8 pi over 30, which is about 0 0.84 inches per second. And number three, the circle has a radius of 10 inches. Find the length of the arc subtended by a central angle of measure 30 degrees. 
around the final length of the three places, right? That's about so three places this time. That's about an hour of ten. And an angle of 30 degrees. So we're going to use S equals R theta. I've got R. I've got an angle, but I need to convert it to radians. So my R is 10 inches. S is, I don't know, we're looking for it. Find the length of the arc. So theta is 30 degrees. Convert it to radians. Multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So 30 goes into 180 six times. So pi over 6. So my S is 10 times pi over 6. And then we're going to go to three places. So 10 pi over 6. Take your calculator, crunch, crunch, crunch. Get about 5.236 inches. And number four, a crate is to be lifted by means of a rope through a pulley. If the crate is lifted through a distance of three feet and the pulley has a radius of six inches, how many revolutions will the pulley make? And the final answer to three places is the decimal point. Okay, already we got a unit problem, feet and then inches. So again, we got this round thing. It looks like I've got an S equals R theta. So here's a sketch of the problem. Radius of six inches. Here's my crate. I'm going to lift it through a distance of three feet. So I'm using S equals R theta. My R is six inches. Uh, if I'm lifting this through a distance of three feet, there should be three feet of rope that comes through the pulley. So S is three feet, which is 36 inches, number 12 inches and a foot. So I've got my S, I got my R, I got enough to find theta. Theta is, and again, we don't know, we're looking for it. So I got 36 is equal to 6 theta, divided by 6. So 6 is equal to theta. Remember, that's 6 radians. We get radians. We want revolutions. Remember, there are 2 pi revolution, 2 pi radians in one revolution. So revolutions is theta over 2 pi. So 6 over 2 pi which is 3 over pi, or about 0.955 revolutions. Notice, the circle, the pulley doesn't even go around once, even though you've lifted the crate three feet. A bicycle gear assembly has a front sprocket gear with a radius of 5 inches, and the gear in the back wheel with a radius of 3 inches. If the front gear makes one complete revolution, how many revolutions will the back gear make? Your answer must be exact. Hmm. Evidently, things work out nice. Otherwise, why this script? So I've got two round things. So make a sketch of the problem. Okay, here's the uh, gear that's on the back wheel, radius three. Here's where the pedals are, radius of five. I have two S equal R thetas. I have an S1 equals R1 theta one. And then S2 equals R2 theta 2. R1 is 3. R2 is 5. Let's see, what are we told? Okay, the front gear makes one complete revolution. So theta 2 is one revolution, which is 2 pi radians. Theta 1 is, um, we don't know. So theta 1 is, we don't know. Theta 2 is one revolution, which is 2 pi radians. Now, what's the connection? Remember, there's a chain that connects these two. The chain is not supposed to slip. So if, let's say, 15 inches of chain goes through the front sprocket, 15 inches of chain better go through the back sprocket. Otherwise, something is wrong. So S1 has to equal S2. So I'm going to have 3 times theta 1 is equal to 5 times 2 pi. So R1 theta 1 is R2 theta 2 again. So we're filling in what we know. 3 theta 1 is 5 times 2 pi. Also, one revolution. Notice since I didn't use 2 pi, I used revolutions. My theta 1 will be revolution. Hmm. Uh, divide by 3. Theta 1 is 5 pi. Notice it's the ratio of the gears. You now know why in a transmission they call them gear ratios. 
so much for 6.4.